here we are back for more. Uh, drums are done, so we're going to get the bass up and running now. When it comes to deciding which bass sounds I want to use, it's basically around three things. First of all, what tuning am I playing in, in guitar? This is important because some libraries, uh, such as Bass of the Gods, only go down to a low A. If I'm playing in drop G, well, that kind of eliminates Bass of the Gods as an option. So I look at the tuning of my guitar and then choose accordingly of the available libraries. Secondly, do I want a particular pre-processed sound or do I want to dip around with a DI signal? Uh, libraries like Panda Bass are DI only, so if I know that I want a dark glass or a sand zamp sound right away, I'll probably not use the Panda Bass because it's DI only. And finally, I also consider what library sounds best with the notes that are being played in the song. You know, sometimes a certain library just does not sound very good because some of the notes being played are a little bit higher up and the higher up samples don't sound as good as another library so on and so forth so these three things are the basic points that i consider when thinking of a library to use so in our case for this track the lowest note is a c so i could use actually any of my libraries actually uh, another thing i'll have to be aware of actually now that i think about it is the bass lines probably need to be fixed a little bit because five years ago i was pretty lazy with that stuff and often would just copy the guitar line and make it the bass line so we're going to need to look at the parts to make sure that they're, you know, acceptable bass lines. Here are the four libraries that I've chosen. Um, you know, I've used all of these a lot in the past and I know how they sound and I like all of them. So of these four, we're going to now demo the song and see which one, uh, you know, that I like the most. Well, I suppose it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, I'm going to go with the Base of the Gods instrument on this one. I reviewed this library all the way, uh, I think it's October of last year and it's easily one of the best ones out there. I didn't quite like how the middle massive bass was sounding in the higher notes. I didn't feel like derping around with the DI, although the panda, boss, the panda bass did sound really good. I mean, as far as the colossal bass one, you know, this time I just wasn't digging the sound. So, um, I mean, I reviewed it and it's awesome, but for this particular song, I wasn't really feeling it. So let's delete these extra ones that we don't need and start fixing the bass parts. And now by what I mean of fixing the bass parts is I'm just going to go through the song make teeny changes to make the sound, uh, bass a bit more realistic and so it's not playing exactly along with the guitar part. Great, our bass is tweaked, ready to be bounced out, and before that, yes, you guessed it, we double check to ensure everything is good. You know what they say, check twice, bounce once. All right, here we are, we're good to go. So we do the same thing we did with the drums, just select track uh, up here in the menu, bounce the tracks, make sure the settings are good, and bounce. Now we can get rid of this contact instrument. We don't need it. And we can move this MIDI file to the archive folder. What we'll do now is clone this track immediately. Name one sub and the other grit because that's how we'll process it when we get to the mixing stage. Route both of these to the bass bus and I'll just mute the grit one now so that I don't have two bass parts playing at the same time if I play back the song. And that's it, the bass is done. Now the fun begins because in the next few videos we're going to be recording guitars. Yay. If you think this is a cool series and it's helpful for you, consider a like rating and subscribing. Hit that bell symbol to get email notifications when the next video comes out, alright? Thanks a lot, have a good one.